What's up, guys? It is Stu. It is another episode of the What the Fuck Gym Talk podcast. I'm back with some live problem solving. And I've got my editors have gone ahead and blocked out the identity and any private and delicate financial information from my clients. And I'm going to show you in live time how I help solve problems. And I'm just grabbing random problems that I'm actually solving on a day to day basis with my clients and sharing the information with you because it, I don't know, it's going to help some of you. So that's what we're doing. Let's get into it. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at, I've got a brand I've been working with that around around 2022, you can see here some data. They had 176 members who started prior to September 2022 and the average LOM length of membership, so how many months they stayed on membership before they canceled, was around 59 months. Real strong. Love that. That's, I mean, fucking five years. Now they installed a new let's call it a new operating system. A, um, you know, we have straight to class, PT first, PT second, these operating models. They installed a new operating model and it, it did not work. They had grown the, the, previously the membership was nice and strong and it was, they were loving a certain menu item for whatever reason, and it doesn't matter, it's not good or bad, but it, they changed their idea. They had a different idea and they went a different route with a different operating model that they thought would be better for the business, the clients, and the coaches. It wasn't. And you could argue it any way you want, but the data is here. And the 60 or so they've sold since, or after, on or after that, and I, I'm not saying they only sold 60 clients here, but pretty strong to showing that um, we're having an LOM of about 12 months average since switching the model. Enter about four months ago, they engaged me and we are now going, we're going back to the other way, all right? So this happens a lot. Again, the one thing I'll say about entrepreneurship and owning a successful small business, you let the data tell you when the decision you made was uh, erroneous or whether your hypothesis wasn't accurate and you don't take it personally, you see the data for what it is and you change. And it is okay to tell your membership and your staff, hey, I've got new information now. Um, that idea I had wasn't that good of an idea. <laughs> Who would have thought? So we're, we're going back the other way or we're doing this other thing, all right? I would argue that it's likely that when they made this change, the original one, they kind of fucked them. My guess is they weren't solving an existing problem. They were solving like a boogeyman problem where you know we're told, hey, there was a big problem. This is the problem. And you're like, oh yeah, I guess I, I think I have seen that. No, that makes sense. And, and you get sold this fucking problem. And it's not really a problem. So when we make changes in the business, always ask yourself, what problem am I solving? Because if you don't have a direct problem and this is a direct solution to it, you're just creating another problem and you'll be in a situation like, like these guys are. That's my task is to help them kind of get back to where they were. So the first thing, one of the first things we're doing, we've been doing a lot of things, but uh, one of them right now is adjusting and going into with a new pricing model going forward. So I had them go ahead and upload their current pricing models. And this is what they currently have right now. All right, so they have a bunch of these punch, like these like one off, like one class for 35 bucks, five classes for 125, 15 classes for 375, 10 classes for a membership, and this is an EFT on 189. So let's just talk about this. One thing I need to get from them, I need to find out what percentage of the membership is on this. So I would have them take an entire, you know, portfolio of their membership base. What percentage is on, it has a five class, punch card and what percentage has a 15 class punch card. I am not a fan of all these like one class punch card, five class punch card, 10 class punch card, 15 class, like, and it just keeps going and all you do is keep reducing the rate. In a product based business where we are making widgets or we're selling shit in bulk like Costco, it makes sense to give a discount based on the bulk because of the economics attached. If I'm making widgets, and I buy lots of widgets, I get them at a discount, meaning I can then sell them at a discount as long as you buy a lot of them. In human-based services, that's not the case. You do not want to discount these human-based services based on volume of purchase, okay? Now, you can have a EFT where the price of the EFT goes up based on the more sessions you receive, whether it be you know, in group fitness, and then the, the per unit price is lower. So you're buying more, meaning your monthly nut is higher, but your per unit price goes down. That's because you have fixed expenses with group classes. Those group classes are happening regardless of whether this person buys or not. Now in here, you could argue, well, these group classes are happening regardless whether they buy them or not as well. You're, you're not wrong, but I'm talking about just from a simplicity, like having a really lean menu. So what I'm going to be recommending, of course, there's a drop in, okay? One class. This one month expiration is kind of silly. Anyone who buys one class, 
they should have to use it within 10 days. Just limit it. Because who buys one class and then just doesn't come in, right? Like 10 days, I would reduce this down. Then I would have, I would get rid of these punch classes here, the five and the 15, and I would just go with five of them at $25 per class. And you can go five, you can go 10, you can go seven, you can go 36, you go 500. Doesn't fucking matter. It's always $25 a class. It just is a minimum of five. You can buy a class pack of ours, a paid in full, but it's a minimum of five sessions. Get as many of them as you fucking want. Oh, that sounds great. Do I get a discount if I buy a thousand? No. And just stare at their big, dumb, stupid face. No, it's a thousand times 25. That's it. It makes it simple. You don't have all these fucking options on your price prezo sheet. And when you're selling people, just keep like, fuck it. Five classes, get as many as you want, as many. Just has to be a minimum of five. And they're always 25 bucks pop. That's how I would, I would do that. I'd make this to be the only one we have. We want to have this 15 class one is fucking, it's stupid. Now a 10 class membership. Now, right now, only 14 members currently reside in this rate. And I know right now for a fact that they have around 275 members. So if I take 14 divided by 275, that comes out to 5% of the membership. So 5% of the membership is on this. I don't see any reason to get rid of it. I just wouldn't offer it in the price prezo. I wouldn't, I wouldn't pitch it. It would be like one of those up my sleeve kind of scenarios if I have to downsell somebody or I'm about to lose a sale. But I wouldn't be advertising it. But I don't see any problem with this because everything else here is like an unlimited. This is the only frequency-based membership. Frequency-based memberships, for those of you guys unfamiliar, where you are, are limited to a certain number of classes or sessions, right? So they're limited to 10 per month. And this is a recurring EFT. So this is their only frequency-based. Personally, I like frequency-based memberships. I have an entire course on this covering all the reasons mathematically why I can make an incredibly sound argument for frequency-based memberships versus unlimited. And one of the things I would probably be discussing with them is that, hey, listen, if you're gonna go with an unlimited only, you also gotta realize cancellation rates historically are higher with unlimited only because the customer, when they are, when they experience a downtick in their attendance, they're in their head like, oh, I'm paying for unlimited and I'm only able to go twice a week. I, I'm just gonna cancel. Because what other option do they have? I mean, all they have here, they have these two unlimited options. One's month to month, and we're gonna be introducing this 12 month contract. But when you only have this, so this is technically what they got as far as a recurring membership, 10 classes and an unlimited month to month. If I'm on unlimited and I was going four to five times a week and I was killing it, but then I got a promotion or then I got sick or then I joined the T-ball league or then my kid got, you know, in the sports, whatever. My only option, I like, I guess I could downgrade to this 10 class, but you know, I guess that's the option. And I would probably be, you know, trying to figure out why are we getting more downgrades to this? But the thing I like about frequency-based memberships, they can go from unlimited, which I normally do is 16, and then they pay for every additional class beyond that, 16, 12, and eight. That has worked out in gyms across the country, other countries, very, very well. I don't wanna spend this entire thing going into why those specific numbers work well. Go take the course inside of MGU. But it, you know, number one, it allows you to onboard people easier. So if you're like overweight Sally, and you haven't been in a gym before, and the first thing, the only thing you could buy is a fucking unlimited membership, you're like, dude, I'm fucking lucky if I make it twice a week, maybe. So the nice thing when you have frequency base, you could sell her on the eight times a month, and then tell her like after you know three months or so of successfully coming, that'd be eight times three, 24 classes, let's upgrade you to 12, and you have like a nice journey for her to hit milestones of success. Additionally, you make more money on ARPC, average revenue per person per class, than in an eight times a month membership than you would at a limited. Right, so the eight times a month membership is gonna be less per month, but more per class, right? We all understand that inverse relationship. So like an eight times a month membership is 160 a month, all right, divided by eight, that's $20 a class. And then maybe on your 12 times a month membership, it's 180 a month, and it, it's $20 higher in a monthly cost, and you get 12 classes, but now you're only making $15 per class. So we see that as the, the overall monthly number goes up, the total monthly cost, and the classes go up, the unit economics go down. So anyway, that's not the point of this, but just some quick little backstory. I'm, but yeah, I'm gonna be having a discussion with them on this, but here's um, what I advise them. We have been going back and forth with some audio messages earlier. If you are gonna now create a 12 month contract, Right. What I recommend you do with the pricing, and I'll be putting these in notes and stuff in here for them. We're gonna go at the difference between their they have a 12 month membership that they're gonna do for 197 and a month to month membership for 217. Now, that is a 
$20 difference. And they are in a very certain part of the country in which people have money. Do you know what people who have money think of $20? They don't think anything of it. They would never notice it if it was gone from their account. They probably wouldn't notice it if there was a, an extra zero on that. There was $200 missing from their account. $20 is fuck off. You literally can't do DoorDash for anything less than 20 bucks. You get out of Starbucks, you spend 10. Like $20 means nothing in today's market based on the, the, the people that they service. I know this for a fact. So what I'm gonna advise and what I'm gonna be recommending here, I'm gonna just put in a comment, is that this is only a 10% difference, okay? Let's shoot for a 20% delta between month to month and 12 month contract. So what does that look like guys? Let's do it real quick. The current month to month of the 12 month membership they want at 197. Remember when you do a month to month, you wanna inflate the price to push people to the 12 month contract. That's the whole point. And then I'm gonna talk about the, cancel, the cancelable contract here in a second. But so if we wanna do that, then I would go ahead and I would say 197 times point Two equals thirty-nine dollars and forty. So yes, perfect. So one ninety-seven plus forty. That's two thirty-seven. So I would recommend that this goes then to two thirty or two forty, which would equal a twenty percent delta between the two. All right. That's what I'm going to recommend. All right. Now, the here's what's going on. You see two forty and you see one ninety-seven and you're a consumer, you're more likely to go to the 197 for the 12 month contract. Because remember, right now, they're showing an average LOM of 12 months. That means the average. That means 20% is like, you know how averages work, right? Like 60% are around 12 months, and then 20% are higher and 20% are lower, all right? If we can get every agreement to go to 12 months as a minimum, what happens to their average LOM? It goes up. Now, I'm a big fan, and this is another full, you know, 60, 75 minute course inside of MGU, is the cancelable contract. And I'm gonna give you guys the highlights here very quickly. A cancelable contract is where you tell Sally, Sally, we have these two options. Which one would you like? Well, I'd really like the, the 197, but I, I've had bad experiences with contracts in the begin in the past. I might have to move. Sally, it's actually no problem. If you like the price for 197, I recommend take our 12 month contract. You'll get the 12 month price, but you can cancel the contract at any time. What, what, what? What do, what do you mean I can cancel the contract at any time? Well, Sally, let me tell you all about it. Our contracts you can cancel at any time. Now we're giving you a discounted rate by 20% for you to commit to being here and pursue your fitness goals with us for 12 months. However, we get that life happens. So if you have to cancel for any reason, all you have to do is pay back the discount we afforded you during that time. So let's say Sally stays with the gym eight months and then Sally's like, oh, I got a job promotion or I'm, I'm gonna go face fuck, you know, McRibs from McDonald's for the rest of my life and I'm, I'm over this whole fitness thing. Whatever Sally decides, it's her life. Let her do her, boo-boo, okay? So if she canceled at month eight, that means you gave her a discount for eight months. So what does she need to do? She needs to pay back the discount afforded to her. So the, di the difference between these two is what? $40, $40 times those eight months, she would owe you 320 bucks. You could be like, well, it's a cancellation fee. Yeah, technically, but not the way I worded it, fuckface. It's her just paying back the discount that you provided to her because she told you she was gonna do a thing. That thing being, stay for 12 months. If she would have kept her ass here for three more months, she wouldn't have to pay it. But it's more advantageous for her cost-wise if she's not gonna be there. She'll pay nine, 10, 11, 12 for her to pay four months at 217 versus pay the 320 bucks to pay back the discount that was afforded to her. And it's just an easy, like there's, um, I've been installing that in gyms for years. And what every client that I've worked with has told me, everyone gets it. It seems fair because it is, okay? So these are some of the conversations I'm gonna be having with my client as we work to creating a brand new pricing structure that's gonna support their business, help them get back to where they were on not only their length of membership and retention numbers, but also their revenue numbers after they kind of needed to course correct their operating model. If you have ever found yourself in a position where you were doing really well and you made a kind of a drastic change in the business and now it's it seems kind of fucked and you want someone to help course correct it, 
Because I'll tell you this right now, if you turn that thing too quickly, you'll bleed even more. You will lose more money, more customers. Like when we are making these changes, you want to be doing it very strategically. This is like one of many steps that I'm taking with this particular company to ensure that the changes we make are gonna you know, reposition the boat slow and steady so we don't have any collateral damage like they had when they made a fast and quick change previously that kind of put them in this position. So anyway, guys, until I talk to you in the next podcast, have a great fucking day.